Now the factor theorem that we just learned makes it ideal for us to go and factorize polynomials that are of a higher degree than 2. Second degree polynomials, quadratic equations or quadratic expressions are easy to factorize. Uh, but third degree polynomials are not so easy and we need to use what we've learned so far. So how are we going to do it? Okay, so imagine I've got a polynomial px that I want to, um, whatever it is that I want to factorize. What's the steps going to be? Well, first of all, I'm going to find a factor using the factor theorem. Okay, using the factor theorem. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Well, the factor theorem said that if I can find a value that I substitute into my polynomial and get an answer of 0, then x minus that value that I found will be a factor. Okay, and that's what I'm going to be, going to do, I mean. Okay, so in my second step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this factor to find the quotient. Okay, so I'm going to find Q and Q will be the result of taking my polynomial and dividing it with this factor that I, that I found in the previous step. Okay, and I will have to use long division for that. Okay, no other way but using long division. Okay, the next step, the third step, will be to write it in division transformation. So write in division transformation. Okay, so if we have found um, our Q, then we can write PX is equal to, now I found Q using long division. Okay, um, I have that this is already a factor, whatever this value is that I substituted to get 0, okay, and I know my remainder is equal to 0, so I don't need to write that. And here you can see I'm almost done. I've got one factor and I've got another factor, but Q might be, we might be able to factorize Q, the um, quotient. Okay, so we might continue factorizing the quotient. So the last step would be to factorize further. Factorize further. Okay. And that usually refers to this Q that can factorize a little bit further. So obviously let's go and look, look at an example and I'm sure from there on you will feel very comfortable with this whole process. Okay. So first of all um, let's take the example where we have x cubed minus 7x plus 6 and we are asked to factorize this completely. Okay, So the first thing we need to do is find a value that I can substitute into the x's. So this is my px. I want to find a value so that p of that value is equal to 0. Now the best way to go about that is to look at this 6 in front here and finding all of the factors that we can substitute. So for example we can substitute 1 or negative 1, 2 or negative 2, 3 or negative 3. Okay, so let's try, why not just try 1? Okay, so if we substitute 1 in here, we find um, that we have 1 cubed minus 7 times 1 plus 6. 1 cubed is equal to 1. 7 times 1 is minus 7 plus 6. And here we go. Oh, perfect. First try and we got something. We got that when we substitute 1, we get zero as a result. So that means my remainder is equal to zero when I am dividing with x minus one. So x minus one is a factor. So I need to find qx. Okay, I need to find qx. The only way to find qx is using long division. Okay, so with long division I have x minus one divide 
divides and our polynomial is x cubed okay we have no x squares okay minus 7x plus 6 that's our polynomial we are trying to find the quotient okay so process very simple divide x into x to the power 3 to get x squared multiply x squared back we get x cubed minus x squared we have to subtract that so all the signs change and now we get 0 plus x squared that's my rem remainder so I bring down my next term and I repeat the process x divides into x squared x times I multiply x back I get x squared minus x now I subtract them again so signs change and I get 0 minus 7x plus x gives me minus 6x and I bring down my last term plus 6 and I finally divide 6 into negative 6x and I get negative 6 when I multiply that back I get negative 6x plus 6 and you can see these two expressions are exactly the same because when I divide or subtract them with signs change I must get 0 0 and 0 my remainder is equal to 0 and it should be equal to 0 because x minus 1 is a factor if it's not equal to 0 either I made a mistake somewhere in my steps or x minus 1 is not really a factor I made a mistake in my previous step already okay so now there is my quotient this is my quotient q x so I can go ahead and write it in division transformation so I have x cubed minus 7x plus 6 is equal to okay what's my qx again x squared plus x minus 6 times my divisor of x minus 1 plus my remainder of 0 which obviously I don't need to write and here you can see how I'm, I've just factorized this into two brackets a small bracket and a big bracket but you'll notice this big bracket is just a quadratic expression and I can very easily do my last step by just factorizing that completely in other words this one will go into two brackets I've got my x minus 1 at the back the one will have an x and the other one will have an x negative tells me they'll have different signs okay one a positive and one a negative the six tells me that I must multiply these two to get six if I multiply them and if I add them I must get positive one and that would be three and two okay plus three minus two gives me plus one plus three minus two multiplied gives me negative six and there I've done it I have factorized this expression okay I don't think that's very difficult at all as a matter of fact there's some free marks in your next test good luck